the center of the core the penthouse area starts to move first and then the building follows along with it that's another indicator that this this report is very suspect and it's all finished the outside walls from the lower floors are piled one on top of the other right in the middle of the building just like a house of cards if it were coming down as a structural engineer i i don't uh, believe that the failure of one column would normally bring down an entire building in the way we saw world trade center seven come down because of redundancy because of uh, all the other columns in the building that were not affected according to nist the failure occurred at column 79 on level 12. this means basically as they're talking about a single columnar collapse or failure that resulted in a total collapse of the building that just does not make any sense <laughs> NIST provided computer animations in support of their fire collapse theory. But what do independent engineers say about these animations? When you observe the footage of how the building failed, and when you look at the, the, the animation of the failure, and compare that to what you actually observe in reality. I think they, they disproved their own theories. It is impossible <laughs> for it to fail the way they said. The exterior of the NIST World Trade Center 7 computer simulation model, which they put together to try to explain their theory, shows large, very large deformations which are not observed in the video of the actual event. If they don't attempt to explain this in the report, what we're seeing is what would happen in a natural collapse, and what we see on the real video is not a natural collapse. destroying the connections and building number seven at 400 connections per second and the only thing that I can see that would be uh, capable of doing this would be explosive devices at the connections and uh, this is why I think that there has to be a new investigation to find out the real physical causes for these all these members to act in an atypical fashion the Freedom of Information Act request to NIST by a registered structural engineer for calculations and analysis substantiating the walk-off failures of the horizontal girders from their seats at columns 79 and 81 was denied by NIST with the claim that releasing this data might jeopardize public safety. How could it possibly jeopardize public safety? to tell people in the industry, engineers who were responsible for designing these buildings, how this failure could occur. Science is never secret when it's done right. Science is a way of finding out that is self-correcting and involves many people. Science isn't science unless it's published, unless it's openly published and made available for criticism. The explanations from FEMA and from NIST don't add up, but there is enormous circumstantial evidence, circumstantial and actually physical evidence as well, that would lead us to a different conclusion. And the conclusion is controlled demolition. A building cannot do free fall with a huge structural, steel structural system in place to support it without it being blown up. That's the only way it could, could come down at free fall. That is controlled demolition. Segregated. Segregated. There's no score. It's an opdracht gebeurd. Dat heeft het team gedaan van experts. Building 7 to me is, is really what gives it away. Because that's a classic case of controlled demolition. is the original site of the World Trade Center Twin Towers. 
Construction is now underway where dramatic new facilities are being erected. Just 10 years ago, the planes hit the towers cutting through some exterior and interior supporting structural steel columns. The fuel from the planes ignited office fires across several floors. According to the official reports, the structural steel frame was weakened and failed, causing a total progressive collapse of each tower. Does the official explanation make sense? Was there a comprehensive investigation that examined all of the evidence? I walked into the office uh, and the first uh, words that I heard was a plane's just run into the World Trade Center. And my initial thought was, well, that's okay. It's built to withstand uh, a 707. It did not seem possible that these, these towers that were designed to withstand the impact of a 707 could possibly collapse in such a short order of time from the time that they were hit. There's no way the building was designed to take the impact of one, if not more, multiple airplanes. They were designed to withstand uh, hurricane force winds of up to 140 miles an hour. These buildings are built to handle several times the load above them. Those perimeter columns could handle five times the load above them, and the core columns could handle three times the load above them. I remember walking up to a window, and a young man turned to me with tears coming down his face. And he said, will they fall down? And I said, no, never has a steel structure building in the history of steel structure buildings ever fallen down for reasons of fire. The majority of the jet fuel was burnt up instantly in the big fireball. And it was gone. The fires that were left were office furnishings and carpet and things like that. A lot of things in these kind of buildings have to be fire resistant by nature. It's required by code. So there really isn't a whole lot of fuel in there to begin with. The media portrayed the, these fires as being extremely hot, but uh, the fires were not that hot in, in World Trade Center 1 and 2. If you look at the NIST's own data, you can see this. And, uh, and to, to use our own powers of observation, you can tell by, by seeing these fires uh, and seeing black smoke come out the windows, that means that the, the fires were oxygen starved and it was incomplete uh, combustion. And so it was a low temperature fire. I looked up in the manual the burning temperature of jet fuel and found that under the conditions that existed at the World Trade Center on 9-11, uh, that jet fuel had to have been burning at about 750 degrees Fahrenheit. I also noticed that the official explanation of what happened there was that the heat from the fire supposedly softened the steel and thereby brought the buildings down. If you have a flame at 750 degrees, you can hold that flame under a steel beam forever and you'll never reach a high enough temperature to bend steel, let alone melt it. So immediately I knew at that point that the official explanation was dead wrong. Rather than a slow groaning collapse that we might anticipate, the Twin Towers show in the videos a very rapid, sudden onset of destruction. What does this imply? Structural steel is required by building and design codes to prevent catastrophic failure and loss of public life. Everybody's seen the building collapses on 9-11 and it was shocking how fast the buildings collapsed. This doesn't happen with structural steel buildings and never has and never will again. We assume that fires could destroy a building. Why people select steel buildings is because they would destroy slowly. The uh, basic philosophy of the building codes in the last 75 to 80 years has been to ensure ductile failure of the members to provide for the public safety. Uh, under this philosophy, uh, members that are overloaded will deform elastically uh, within the elastic range of the material 
with increasingly large defamations, deflections. This gives rise to large defamations that are uh, visible and apparent to the occupants of the structure. It would gradually twist and bend and give people plenty of time and safety in getting out of the building. I would not have expected the whole building to just give in at once. And I thought it rather odd that they um, fell almost perfectly uh, in, in very similar ways. Um, it seemed odd that lightning would strike twice. And it certainly would stay in the damage zone. It would not drop down through 80,000 ton of insulated, undamaged structural steel and do it in 12 seconds. This claimed that the upper section of each of the towers crushed the lower section. However, when you watch video closely, in the case of World Trade Center 1, you'll see that the upper section disintegrates itself. It appears to be a controlled demolition of its own, of the upper section. The top section pushing on the bottom section, it's going to meet equal forces as it goes. Both sections are going to be uh, demolished at the same rate. So by the time you've crushed up 15 stories below it, the top 15 stories are also going to be crushed. Well, there's demolitions uh, done in France, which use what we call the burnage te technique, where they take out a couple floors worth of columns with hydraulics. They take the columns out, and they let the building, the upper section of the building drop two full floors. And when it impacts the lower section, there's a very definitive, observable jolt deceleration and velocity loss. You're looking for a jolt. <coughs> this thing, if it actually comes down and hits, you should be able to see the point at which they actually impact because it would actually slow down the motion of the falling block. It never slows down. It accelerates the entire time. And that was what was extremely significant. I was very familiar with uh, the Twin Tower elevator systems. I actually rode up and down elevator shafts on the top of a car going to 1,200 feet a minute, and you can imagine the experience before the tower started collapsing from the top, the antenna started to fall. And the antenna, uh, of course, was over the middle of the elevator shafts. I'm very familiar with the interior structure uh, that surrounded the elevator shafts and uh, the accessibility which the elevator companies had 24-7. The only way that I can see that the towers could have collapsed is that the interior columns were compromised. It wouldn't be a problem once you gained access to the uh, elevator shafts. Then a team of loading experts would have access to all the core columns and beams. The rest could be accomplished at that point by just the right kind of explosives for the job at hand. NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, acknowledges that the towers came down at essentially free fall acceleration. What are the implications of that admission? The measurements have indicated that Tower 1 collapsed in about 11 seconds and Tower 2 collapsed in about 9 seconds. 